Hey folks, and thank you for joining us and welcome to the new ESEA Coordinator Training Series. In this video, we're going to be going over Monitoring 101. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So when it comes to monitoring from the ESEA team, there are three major goals or three primary goals that we wish to address. And first and foremost is to build relationships with districts and school leaders to ensure accountability to federal statute with a focus on support, not compliance, and to maximize the use of resources to increase student achievements. So the ESEA federal programs team here at Maine DOE is comprised of various representatives from each of the title programs, um, including McKinney-Vento. So this team will continue to annually monitor LEAs for effective implementation of ESEA programs and compliance with apl um, applicable statutory requirements. Additionally, the team will utilize this process to provide meaningful technical assistance to those LEAs in need of additional supports. So monitoring will, will cover requirements specific to Title 1A, Title 2A, Title 3A, Title 4A, Title 5, and the McKinney-Vento Act. The process is not intended to be ex exhaustive or ensure compliance with every legal requirement. Rather, it's designed to verify compliance with major elements of the law, as well as to assist the LEAs in improving student outcomes using federal dollars. So for FY23, a formal monitoring pilot will take place. And part of that includes differing levels of supports, three collection periods spread out over the school year, and a new monitoring tool built into the Grants for Me website. So when we talk about the differing levels of supports, we're talking about a high level of support, a medium level of support, and a low level of support. And each of these levels is associated with a number of items um, from our monitoring tool, and so if you are receiving the highest level of support for monitoring, um, you will need to address you know, all of the applicable items. If you are uh, identified as needing medium level of support for monitoring, um, you'll, your district will be uh, required to report on about half of the items. And then if you are identified as a low level of support, or needing low level of support, then you actually wouldn't have any additional formal monitoring requirements as what we are doing in the application, the performance report, and through invoicing, uh, and the items in which we're monitoring through those tools would be sufficient. So the next piece we talked about is the three collection periods. So in prior years, monitoring used to be a single um, collection period. So in early October, districts who were being monitored would have to submit all documentation for all items as part of the formal desk monitoring. Now what we are doing is we are actually spreading that out over three different periods throughout the school year, the fall, the winter, and the spring. The purpose of doing this is to capture when things are being done um, out in the district rather than necessarily pulling things on one specific date. And this also allows for districts to not feel overwhelmed when it comes to monitoring. As I said previously, all items were due in early October. This is the beginning of the school year and can be a very stressful time for folks. And so by spreading it out over the three periods, it allows districts to um, you know, go through the monitoring requirements and submit documents and not feel like it's a very heavy burden. Um, so depending on the size of your districts and which items actually apply, you know, it could be anywhere from at the high level, it could be up to 11 or 12 items um, in each of those collection periods. If you're at the mid-level, it could be anywhere from five to six. And as I said, if you're in the low level of support, then it, it, there's not going to be anything. And then lastly, we're talking about a new monitoring tool built in Grants for Me. So just like the FY22 ESCA Consolidated Application, 
as well as the 23 and all future applications. Um, it's going to be in the Grants for Me platform. And so we wanted to make sure that we're utilizing the platform for more than just the application, but it's also going to house where our monitoring tool is. And so it'll be familiar for folks um, who have to use it for other purposes and not just a single purpose. When we talk about monitoring and we're talking about the support levels for all districts, we really do look at all districts. Um, previously, we had done a cohort model. And so what we had decided to do as part of this pilot program is to look at all districts and how they all do with the items listed here. And so these items are the items that determine the level of support that is needed. So as you can see, there's some items related to funding, there's items related to turnover, there's items related to applications, performance reports, invoices, excess carryover funds, um, and prior risk assessment ratings. So because this is a pilot, we don't have any prior risk assessment ratings. And so really it comes down to all of those other things. And so that's why when we talk about new coordinator training and wanting to kind of bring you up to speed on monitoring, you can see some of the pieces in here referring to the application. And so these are the items that we used uh, from last year. And so we're going to actually use uh, very similar items or if not, sorry, the same items for next year when we do, when we identify schools for levels of support for monitoring. And so it'll say, you know, when was the FY23 application submitted? Was it submitted late? How many times did it return for edits? And so when those things are done this year, it does have an impact on next year's monitoring. And so that's why we wanted to make sure that we shared it with you here today. And as always, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to your ESCA Regional Program Manager as we're always happy to help. Otherwise, you can visit our website listed here, maine.gov slash DOE slash learning slash ESEA. And thank you again for joining us today. We wish you best in your new role as an ESEA coordinator. Have a great day. And we'll see you in the next video.